<laughs> Clean it though. Your house is a landmark over there, yeah, Bridget. Kathy Tennis told me that she went over there and started oh. bothering you. And she called me, said, oh, beautiful place. I get mumbling about that house. You know? Not about me, but about the house. It's a wonderful house. John Tyler. I want him to marry the Tyler. Honorable Sir William Howe. This house is one of the It was all oyster point before it was oyster. Kids' money. East Hampstead. I got that one. Yeah, I got that it's one. It's a mistake, wrong. though. The map's from London. Yeah. They didn't Not, Northampton is correct because they call the North Sea Northampton. Washington sees it as a notorious day. However, Nathaniel Gardner, his son, fought in the Continental Army under Washington. I'm very proud to have the Order of the Cincinnati <laughs> given by Washington to him, you see, while his father was entertaining Major Andre, the British spy, who made Benedict Arnold the best and was shot at West Point. So I have a glass from John Andre because Abram Gardner and he were such buddies, they would drink together in the house, which is now the Ladies Village Improvement Society, the Brown House in East Town. That was my great great grandfather's house, and it was a hotbed of Tories in the Revolution. And the son of the owner of the house, who was fighting in the Continental Army under Washington, came back and stayed in the house with his brother and went to the secret room up in the attic, which I used to play in. And there was a trap door, and you slid the lintel, you went downstairs, and inside was the secret room with air vents that went to the eaves of the house. And that's where Nathaniel Gardner was kept. Well, Major Andre was not head of the British intelligence for nothing in 1776. And after, Nathaniel went back to his regiment in New Hampshire. Major Andre said to his buddy, Colonel Abram Gardner, he said, you know, you outfitted a royal, a royalist regiment, Tory regiment, in New London, and you paid for the uniform, and outfitted, and gave horses, you spent all that money for King George. So, I want to tell you something, I knew your son was treated in a secret room here, but I never arrested him, because you've been such a loyal subject of His Majesty George. So he escaped. Now that Mary Gardner did, cruel work, done in the 1700s, here. And this is another chair of Abram Gardner the Tories, you see. And here is my great great grandmother, Sarah Griswold. She was the granddaughter of Matthew Griswold, the governor of Connecticut, painted by Waldo. And here is the home pond on Gardner's Island. And here is the King that made our family fortune gave us the tens and tens of thousands of acres. And this is the original portrait of King Charles I. We got nothing from any King George. But if you come in, I see the stragglers coming in. Uh, they want to just come right in. 
Oh, it's a shame I didn't. I'm okay. 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 Here's another story. Here. Here. <laughs> there was this beautiful, good looking man, Charles I. And he's the one that gave us the island and gave us half the township of Southampton because there was no East Hampton yet. And we gardeners then owned half the township between Wainscott now, East Hampton, and Eastport. East Mauritius, you see. And then East Hampton was founded, but we were nine years on this island before anybody lived in East Hampton. So now that this is part of East Hampton, we are definitely the founding family of East Hampton. But Charles the first head was already chopped off when East Hampton was founded, you see. No longer was it under Charles the first, as we were under Charles the first on this side. And then when Wyandanne, his favorite daughter, was abducted by the Narragansett Indians, Ryan got away up and paid a hundred pounds for her, which was an enormous amount in those days. And he returned Heather Flower, Princess Maloney, to her father. And for that, we got 40,000 acres, most of Brookhaven, right across from the Sound to the, to the, to the Parrier Beach, right through the Mauritius. We owned the whole thing right across. Then we up, up acquired Smithtown. We sold it to the Smiths, and the business of the bull is a lot of bull. <laughs> the original deed for Smithtown is not in Richard Smith's name, but in Lion Garden. And here is the signature of the great Chief Wyandanne, Lion Gardner's friend and blood brother. They cut their veins and put them together. And when Wyandanche was killed by the Narragansett Indians, the letter of Lion Gardner to John Winthrop, the first governor of Massachusetts Bay, is absolutely pathetic. He said, your Excellency, who is the governor, Winthrop, he writes from here, I am desolate. I have not only lost my best friend, but my brother, the great chief Wyandanche, who had been poisoned by the Narragansett Indians and dropped dead. There, this is, you see, the precious tortoise shell. All Stuart portraits of St. James's Palace are framed in tortoise shell and ebony. This is the original portrait, 1635, by Daniel Mitens, the court painter for Charles I, before Van Dyck, who did the famous portrait of Charles II with the Spaniels, the Charles II Spaniels. Charles II, his son, founded North and South Carolina and called Charleston, South Carolina, after himself. But this was the father of the founder of Carolina. So this island is older than North and South Carolina. And it's three kings before Williamsburg was even built. We were third generation Americans on this island when William and Mary built Williamsburg. So there's a benchmark. It's the oldest estate intact on the continent of North America today. So you historians, that you could put down as fact. It's the only Charles I grant a lordship and manor intact today, and I'm vice president of the colonial order of lords of manors, and I'm the only lord of the manor that still has the manor. The others are much more recent, and they've all been broken up. Livingston Manor, which was James II, after Charles II, not only Charles I, but after Charles II, to James II, and that is now the Borscht Circuit. It's where Jenny Grossinger's little resort was, which, where uh, Elizabeth Taylor met Eddie Fisher. And, you know, it's hardly Livingston Manor anymore. <laughs> that is John Lyon Gardner, the seventh Lord of the Manor, and his wife, Sarah Griswold, the granddaughter of Matthew Griswold, governor of Connecticut. And there is the home pond on Gardner's Island. And this is, they are very good looking. And this is a piece of cloth of gold material given by Captain Kidd to my ancestress, Mrs. Gardner, and green and red silk. 
You see the gold in it. Mm -hmm. Given in 1697 to Mrs. Elizabeth Gardner, wife of the third proprietor of Gardner's Island, after a dinner of sucking, suckling pig in the manor house. Just after Kidd had buried 24 chests of the Kidd treasure, which you will see the exact spot it was dug up. In 1690, it was only on the island for two years. In 1697, it was dug in. And when John Gardner, my ancestor, was standing by, seeing the sailors dig in the 24 chests, hundreds of diamonds, rubies, sapphires, pearls, gold, silver, can you imagine? He said to John Gardner, his family tradition said, if I come back for this treasure and it's not here, I'll have your head or your sons. You did not fool around with Captain Kidd. He was the governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony from the Crown, and he received the Kidd treasure in Washington when John Gardner brought it up. And he sent it over to England, and William and Mary just let me talk. William and Mary auctioned it off in London, and it paid 80% of the construction of the Royal Naval Hospital for wounded sailors. So the kid treasure from Gardner's Island built a wounded sailor hospital in Greenwich, outside of London. Kid was hanged at Corn Hill in London for beating the sailor over the head with a bucket, not for piracy. They brought up piracy, and it was a completely a political trial. They brought up piracy, and his letters of mark from the Lords of the Admiralty, which would absolve him from piracy, disappeared at his trial. The moment he was executed, lo and behold, they found the letters of mark. He was a vestryman of Trinity Church, very respected. And when we gardeners went to Trinity Church in New York, when we were in the city, our house was on Beaver Street, and we were next door neighbors in Manhattan to Captain Kidd. And he passed the plate on Sunday when we put the coin in the dish. And he was our friend, and that's why he buried the treasure on the island. And then it was under English law in 1699, it was long after the Dutch had left in 1664. My ancestor, Lion Gardner, never heard of New York, never. During his entire lifetime, the city on Manhattan was New Amsterdam, and the province was the New Netherlands, which is now the state of New York. And Elizabeth Gardner, born on this island, was the first English baby born in the New Netherlands. So we are the first English family in the state of New York. No one over. And we're the first white family of Connecticut. Two of the first original colonies. We are the first family in East Africa. And Julia was born on Gardner's Island, which originally was not part of East Africa, but later the next. And was an independent launch for men. And my Father's full aunt was First Lady of the United States in 1845. I come from a long line of old marrying bachelors. And they married younger women. And my cousin, Harrison Tyler, who is with me still, he's leaving this afternoon to go back to Virginia to the great Tyler estate there, Sherwood Forest. And my great aunt added two wings to it and built a ballroom on it where she did the Virginia Reel. And during the war between the states in the 1860s, in the Civil War, she became more Virginian than the Virginians. She was born a damn Yankee on this island. But she became so Virginian, she even said house and about the way the, Egypt, the, the, the uh, Virginians do. She spoke perfect Virginian accent. American women are marvelous actresses. I know a lady from Brooklyn who is the premier Duchess of Ireland, the Duchess of Lisbon. Well, she doesn't say, if you burrow Erster's in Earl, this burrow. And she doesn't say, the oily boy gets the boy out of the toys. But she has no Brooklyn accent whatsoever. She speaks with the most wonderful upper-class English accent, not Cockney like 
uh, Leach, uh, Bright, uh, Lloyd Stoyle, the, the rich and famous. <laughs> but she speaks with the way a duchess should speak. But she's from Brooklyn. So I call her the Brooklyn Duchess. But American women are born actresses. They are moms. Do you remember Vivian Lee, who was the English actress, took the part of Scarlett O'Hara? She had a perfect southern accent in the movie. When you, I met Vivian Lee, my dear, she's very British. There's nothing southern about her. She acquired that accent just for the movie. It was extraordinary. People can do it. You either have the ear or you haven't. I happen to have the ear. And I had my English grandmother who said, you sound like a damn Yankee. And my American grandmother said, you sound <coughs> like a damn limey. So I couldn't be good with either grandmother on each side of the Atlantic. I ended up with an accent east of Bermuda. <laughs> well, anyway, that's that. These are all family examples from, you see, 18th century, with the caveatrids, the lion, the Rara model. These Wedgwood candelabra, you see, waterproof glass. <coughs> and the desk in the living room, McIntyre from Boston. Yes, the Garden Museum is not, not old at all. The family was built in the 1900s, an imitation Venetian palace built with his money from the New York Stewart's department store. And Jack Gardner, the husband of Mrs. Gardner, Isabella Gardner, was a cotton broker born in Manchester, England, where the Beatles come from. Mm -hmm. So he was hardly an old Bostonian. No, we were the first Boston Garden. We built the fort to protect Boston on Reeds Hill and Bunker Hill, which 150 years later became famous with the Battle of Bunker Hill. But my ancestor in the 1630s built the original fort there, and they were called Gardner's Forts in those days. Then he went to Sable, and then he came here, and then he died in East Ham, the first man. The portrait here? Is my aunt is Sarah Dudati Gardner. That we got, that was about 82, by Mrs. Albert Curtin, Adele Curtin. Her place is out in your story. On the way to all the things here are beautiful, and it changes the inside. And this has really lovely wildflowers, so delicious flavors. We have the latest diesel generators, the latest batteries. We have the latest oil burners. And that's why the place is worth the 125 million. It's the underpinnings that you never think of living on the mainland. We bring in $40,000 worth of oil every year. I'll show you. This
up nine miles to the nearest stop. We pay for roads, East Kenton Road, and we have 20 miles of the dirt roads here. And we pay for fire, and we have no fire protection. We pay for we pay for police, and we'd be murdered here by the, but before the police could arrive. Don't you understand? It's taxation without representation is what the Boston Tea Party was about. Anyway, isn't this interesting? Yes. Let me see, you don't understand what is underneath having to live here the way we do and have the toilets flush and everything work. It's all made here, not from East Hampton or Long Island. two weeks each stint? Oh, well, it's not more, it's more than two weeks. I mean, it's divided up different. It, half for the year each for my sister and me. Now, my, the Golettes are really the guests of my sisters because there are only two, there are only two heirs to this island. Yes, me and your sisters. And when my sister wanted to come, when she's allowed the Golettes to be her guests, and when she wanted to come here, you won't believe it. Mr. and Mrs. Bullett said, it is inconvenient. <laughs> and they are her. Yeah. I mean, you don't believe to that be <laughs> Look at this, all out of the Boswick Virgin Oak Forest peg oh from the 1660s. Look at this. Look at this knife from the 1660s. Hundred years before the record. Look at the frame. All put together with frame. Look at the latest track. But that's what you have to do. But this is what all the Sure, you can't offer it to be Some of these beans are all This is it. You can see this is with you out of the Boston Forest at all pegs. Yeah. It's the framing. Cut twice a summer. 900. That's 1,800. That's good. You're But not much. That the bound boys' house is the less it's allowed to do. <laughs> They had houses down in Freetown under the bridge at East Hampton. And here you see the remains of the stone wall. On the left, see the stone? All done by the slaves. Shades of New England. But it's not like East Hampton. You see, you don't see stone walls in East Hampton. No, no, no. no, I say shades of New England because I'm from New England originally. But this, there's not much inside. Have you been out on Robbins Island? Is there any? Yes. More than two Robbins Island would fit into this forest alone. And it went for nine million two. Can you imagine? No, and this is more than ten times with a luxurious manor house with electric light plants, with oil, everything magnificent oil burners, the latest. This is worth a hundred million. And you think the Golays just want it for the money? Well, because they're gonna tell and they bought my nephew share the half share out for one million dollar. The name is Golette. Golette. Pronounced because Goulet is a singer from Canada, yes. a French Canadian, spelt differently. G O U Gou. This is G O E, like go, stop and go, go let. No. Wait a minute. I don't know where we're off. Oh. 
Well, it's nice to know there's one rainforest that's not going to be demolished, right? So this has never been cut. These are no inside. It, there's some oaks 800 years old. Pre pre Columbian in the center. The second only to the um, redwood. Do you notice the change? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Oh. Very lovely. How about the tick population? Plenty. Plenty, yeah. oh dear. Rocky Mountain. Look at the deer! 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 Did you see him? Oh, it's so adorable. <laughs> a little baby. He's just a baby. Well, what do you think of the other? I'll never forget the Look at that oak. Isn't that lovely? A, a very small acorn. Now that was big at the time of the revolution. That's the slowest growing oak there is. Quercus alba. That is the white oak. The, the white oak. The, the pin oak, the red oak grow much faster but don't last as long. million dollars on that 600,000. I lost. Nobody's fault was mine. That was four times the 600,000. I lost. And it was my fault. I made 40 million. And I couldn't have made it without losing two and a half. You see, that's where people don't understand. Yeah, that is hard to fathom. You see, because you wouldn't have ever taken the task to make the 40 had you not lost the two and a half. And had you been prudent, and held the 600,000, I would have lost a fortune. Because 600,000 58 years ago is not 600,000. Oh, God. Yeah. And I would have said, no, I didn't lose a cent. Mm. You see, I still have the 600,000. That would have been untrue. You are a smart man. But do you want, no, it's not smart. I'm just logical. No, and I believe, no. I believe in inflation. No. It's here to stay. Do you really think so? I know it is. Because the Roman emperors did it, Louis XIV did it, Queen Victoria did it. And if you don't think Bush is doing a mistake, they're all doing it. It was recovered only here two years, 1697 to 1699. It was only here two years. Hundreds of diamonds, ruby sapphires, 24-7, brought in one mile from the beach, from the uh, 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 San Antonio, Captain Kidd, that and dug in there. And here's Captain Kidd's marker, this hardscope. So many feet in there, so many degrees down in the valley. 24 chests were dug in. And he told John Gardner, who watched them dig it in, if I come back for this treasure, it's not here, I will have your head or your son. You did not fool around with Captain Kidd. When he was hanged for feeding a sailor over the bucket in 1699 in London, Corn Hill, not for piracy, for not murdering a sailor. They brought up piracy at the trial, at the political trial. And he said, I'm not a pirate. I have letters of mark from the Lords of the Admiralty, Admiralty allowing me to stop French ships on the high seas, which he did. And the treasure from this, from the French ship, was buried right there. Back in, in, in it. Majesty was graciously committed to the first country at the sixth day of the sea. And there it was, just like mine, in the same handwriting, signed by the Earl of Solomon, the governor of Massachusetts Earl Six diamonds short, the Earl had stopped. <laughs> Crooked politicians have not changed since 1690 till today. <laughs> yeah. Would you tell us about your ring? Oh yes, but this definitely finished the fifth treasure because that had nothing to do okay. with the fifth treasure. Okay. I know people think of that, but oh. the stylish crowd. We were actually sent to for many, many crowds. We found we could not join these so we joined. They spent burnt down the second manor house, I was. So we found we could not leave, okay? So we then started to be thankful for them. And when we read that they were hanged by the neck, we knew where to dig. And some of the 
loose came to us, and these diamonds are from Snuffa, from Spanish time, pilots. They're the old cut. They're blue white. Beautiful color. You see? But they're the old cut, very high, much more higher than they would be today. And they were from the noble snuffbox who cooked. We have two bald eagles on the island. Same eagles that are on the, co the coin. Aha, uh -huh, the same ones. It's really great. No one near that. I know you think the island is about one mile long. It isn't. It's 27 miles of round. Mm. And it would take you many days to see. I'm only giving you a few high points. We're nowhere near the high cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Right here, right here. The clip here, the hanging chick here, right, 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 be right back at the house. I can't do it, it takes a long time. That shows we pay attention to your story. No. I wish I had the breath and the energy to do it, each and every one of you separately. You should have a recording. Right? Now this is the, oh, the marshmallows, pink, marshmallows. pink marshmallows. Wild turkey. Wild turkey. Oh, really? You oh, really? I just saw the whole book in there. Oh, how jolly. That's scary. They say they never fly. They never fly, they say. You know that now, don't you? They never fly. Oh, darling. You saw it fly, didn't you? And ornithologists will swear to you they never fly. You can laugh at the ornithologist with a degree. <laughs> oh, two of them, oh, darling. They just outgrown their spots, it looks like. You're not disappointed then, in the oh, 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 oh. Dear, dear. Oh, oh, look at the swans. Oh, the key things in the pagoda. The pagoda has long since fallen down. And the ladies of the house would come out here, do embroidery, write poetry, write, read books. The men would be out swimming or hunting or fishing. And there are 600 mute swans on the lakes on Gardner's Island. This is Bostwick on and look at the hundreds of white swans, swans in England. Every, every spring, they have a ceremony called Swan Uppy. And all her nobles' estates, like the Duke of Norfolk, the Duke of Marlborough, the Duke of Northumberland, they all have to go out and engrave on the beak of the swan, E2. 
Elizabeth II, the present reigning queen, because she owns all the swans with her. The old story is just like there is in Suffolk County Waterford. We should make it like Mountain Valley Water, make the fortune out of it. That's a good idea. <laughs> I've always come here, you could never do this in America, with your life. I always drink, drink out of the stream the way the Indians did. The, the fresh water streams here made Land gardener say it was the island of life, not the island of death, which was the Indian name for the island. Manchonak, the island of death. Because there'd been a prehistoric battle here between the Montaukets and the hereditary enemy, enemy tribe of Connecticut, the Pequots, that Land gardener had fought in Connecticut. So he was smart to come over here to be, make friends of the chief of the Long Island Indians, the hereditary enemy of the big wasps that he had fought in Connecticut. Is they canoe over from Montauk? Oh, they lived because they, they were settled here. There were a lot of Indians. Look at all the ferns here, beautiful ferns. They're marvelous mushrooms, red ones, quite edible, not poisonous. All kinds of there's sponges and tobacco lot palm that don't exist anywhere else in the world. That, that's it? That's it. branch would not break. They put him on a chair, they kicked the chair out from under him, and he had his neck broken. We did that to several men. One was a Bennett that killed his brother on the island. The Lord of the Manor had him executed for murder. He had 12 men, jury. They found him guilty. He was taken away and hanged here. And hangings were a great event because it was Joe TV and all the old ladies and all the children and the men on the estate came to the hanging. And I can't say this. Ladies, ladies turn away. But the doctor knows that when a man is hanged, he gets the record and the order. And all the old ladies, the grandfather, came to the hanging. They haven't seen one for years. <laughs> carp in it, and those are artificial wood duck nests. Yes, there are a lot of freshwater ponds. Oh, yes, that's the point. Yeah. We could have had island, uh, Fisher's Island or Shelter Island. This was the only one with the water running. That's why Lion Gardner took it. The streams. One goes under the mother. Yes, the streams. Yeah. Because he didn't have to even have a windmill to pump it. He had water, fresh water, but surrounded by the salt water of the ocean. Yeah, Don't you see? It's like Montauk. Island. Montauk has it's that. like, but he was a pilot. so little about history uh, no about what's really going on yeah. like no yeah. yeah. right. and so many people say oh would you need this to the nephew or do that now i'd say to them are you citizens of the united states did you ever hear of a thing called an inherited stamp no we never heard. people that live here and don't even think of it isn't it incredible yeah. well that's see i know what he Americans are absolutely You might think they were foreigners that had nothing to do with America. They don't know the first thing about the laws of this land. I have to live by the laws of America. Don't you see? 
but the average person, they don't know them. is in New York real estate, and she pays no income tax. She's the only English woman that is not a citizen. <laughs> she you said no. Citizen. That I didn't know. No, of course you didn't, because you never thought. My wife is a British subject. She has a British passport. Think, how is it possible that the Queen of England is a British subject? My wife is a subject of the Queen. Right. She cannot be a subject of herself, dear. No, of course okay. not. Of course not. not. Now you realize. Yeah. So she has a diplomatic passport. She's head of state, but she's not an English woman. <laughs> and she pays no income tax, no inheritance tax, and no capital gains. That's why she's so rich. But these are the things that get up is when you really think it out. Woman said, I said, what would you use for this? I never thought of that. Well, you have a royal grant. You don't pay taxes, do you? I said, do you think any private state in the United States of America does not pay taxes? The only thing that don't pay taxes, churches, schools, and museums. But, you understand? Well, what you look at you? The highest... <laughs> I hate to get the highest camera. Oh, no, that's all right. Can we get off? Yes, yes, definitely. Good to see you. Hold on. Highest point of the island. Whale Hill Tower. It's pretty impressive.